everyone, and welcome back to this week's installment of Mish's Market Minute. I am your host, Mish Schneider. And again, as always, I'd like to thank Stock Charts TV for giving me this time to be with you and give you some stock picks. So we're thick into the earnings seasons now. So what I'd like to do is cover a whole bunch of stocks that already reported and go through what we talked about as potential longs and shorts on some of those picks and things that are still setting up and then look at some of the hot stocks that will be reporting through next Wednesday, as I'll be with you again next Thursday to go through some more picks. So anyway, let's get going. Okay, so let's go through some of the symbols here. I'm not going to mention every one, but we're going to go with Intuitive Surgical, which we covered last week. Actually, a couple we covered last week, Visa and Boyd Gaming. And uh, actually, I did some research on Boyd Gaming uh, based on a comment that one of you gave me on the YouTube video. And there is a Boyd electric vehicle in China. That's a different symbol. It's, I think, BDDY. Boyd Gaming is indeed related to Las Vegas, so I thank you for that distinction. It was confusing since both are called Boyd. Uh, you can see I, the first three rows are all going to be uh, stocks that have already reported with Apple and Amazon, Starbucks, and MicroStrategy. As I'm talking to you, not reporting yet. They'll be reporting after in the afternoon of when I'm recording this. So by the time you see it on Friday, they'll have already reported. So I'll give you some plan for that. And then there's 700 stocks reporting next week. So I had, for time's sake, picked some of my favorite ones to look at uh, in different sectors that I like. So let's get started. So let's start with intuitive surgical. And the reason why I'm starting with this one is I know we covered this, number one. Number two is we have a position, full disclosure. And number three is I think that uh, we still have a relatively decent setup if this was something that you wanted to get into. Now, intuitive surgical is uh, medical equipment. And so right now, what we can see here, before we even look at the actual price chart, is we do see that the leadership here is outperforming the S&P 500. On momentum, though, we haven't quite cleared where we need to to get over this 50-day moving average. That's why I say there's still an opportunity there. We really would like to see this clear. We're, of course, long a little bit lower levels. So if we're looking at this fresh for the first time, you can see that this whole area of an about 250 to 252 is pivotal. And of course, we did have that reversal pattern here where it made a new 60-day high and then sold off hard. But we've had more than a 10% correction. And so on the flip side, we never really got a reversal pattern, but we did sort of get a mean reversion. Remember, I told you with the mean reversion, price has to be below the Bollinger Band. And the momentum, as you can, if you scroll your eyes all the way down to the bottom of my screen, it also broke the Bollinger Band there and then came back through. So that was already on my radar as a result of a mean reversion trade. But of course, we waited for earnings and then bought it above the 50-day moving average at around 344.50. So we have a little bit of cushion here. However, this is a trade that could evolve. So I would say looking at this, if it continues to hold these levels and clears 354, that would be another good area to look at. And you would have, this is a stock that has about an $8 average range per day that's measured over the course of 10 days. So if you're going to risk $12, that basically gives you one and a half ATR risk, which is plenty. Of course, what you want to see is it for, to double that before you take a profit. So if we're going to risk $12, we want to see $24, which means if you got in over that $354, you're looking at $366 excuse me, 366 and then another 12, you're looking at 378, which means you'd be banking on this going to new highs right here. If you look at the high here, it was 362.34. We'd be looking at it to go up to like here, which certainly seems doable. This is a pretty hot stock. Next one, also reported already, is Google. Now, my feeling about Google was to sell the event kind of thing. So yesterday, it popped big, as you can see here, and then it's consolidating today. So my sell the event theory may not necessarily be ready yet, but 
I would definitely keep my eye on it. This certainly popped it over the SPY for outperformance. But look at our momentum indicator. It's popped, but it hasn't gotten anywhere near over that 50-day moving average. So with this inside day here and this new 60-plus day high, in fact, new all-time highs, if this broke down under 27.88, especially after an inside day, say next week, that could actually be an interesting situation to look at from a short side. Conversely, I would not necessarily want to buy this for anything more than an active trade. But after an inside day, if it holds above this Bollinger Band, then the momentum doesn't start turning down. And we clear the high from yesterday to 2,973, then you might be able to get an active trade with some momentum up to say what some of the analysts are predicting, like 3,300. That would be lofty, but anything is possible in this crazy market. Next one that already reported was one that I almost bought and then decided to be a little bit more patient. And I'm really glad that I did because you can see now as I'm talking to you after it looked really good on this chart, let's, you know, let's make this range a little bit. Let's go six months because that's really all we're looking at right here anyway. But after yesterday that it started to look really good, I waited and you can see it's selling off here. But does that necessarily mean it's over? So let's take a look here. We don't have uh, uh, certainly any outperformance over the SPY. And if we look at the momentum, we've ticked back down under the 50. So the momentum is doing worse than the actual price. So what I would like to see here is maybe a little bit more of a dip, maybe say, even if it broke the 50 down to 62.50, and if it doesn't break the 50, at least some kind of approving that could hold between 63 and 64, not that far away. And then we would have to see some sign that the momentum is improving. So I'd like to see the momentum get back over 50. Nonetheless, this is actually one that I'm really interested in. I had also talked to you about Las Vegas Sands, and that also is red today. So two that could still watch and be a good potential. One that I was really excited about, but is a complete proof of you don't buy ahead of earnings is Visa. And Visa just tanked after earnings yesterday and then continued to tank today as I'm talking to you. So now we have the possibility of watching maybe for a mean reversion trade, which would mean actually a pretty good idea here would be that it gets back over this low at around 216 and back over the Bollinger Band here. Plus that would also mean that it would have to get back over the Bollinger Band here on the real motion. Remember we set this for two standard deviations. If that happens, then perhaps the worst is over. And then of course you would have a good risk to whatever this low is if this turns out to be the low. Next one here is reporting I think I may have repeated this. I did. I repeated this twice, so forgive me. But Apple now, Apple really needed to clear 150. Now, Apple's got all kinds of problems. It's got chip shortage problems, it's got labor shortage problems, it's got regulation problems, but nonetheless, it keeps rocking and rolling, probably because the projections for the revenues are really high, number one, and the iPhone 13, which I have yet to buy, but want to buy, is doing well. So all you have to say is now, what's going to happen with earnings? It better beat the expectation to maintain these levels. If it does, then I see no reason why Apple can't get through the highs and continue rocketing on up. That means it'd have to clear 155. Let's see if that's right. No, actually 157. And then from there, take out 160. And then you can see this thing go higher. You've got certainly the leadership here and the momentum just took a nice little bit beat up. But I would not be long that's just not my style ahead of earnings. Uh, I would probably almost prefer to pay up and follow it on a more active trade. The next one also reported very well, and that was Ford. But what's so interesting about Ford is we could actually have a negative mean reversion. In other words, it got overbought. It's back down under the Bollinger Band. Interesting uh, inverted hammer doji pattern here for those who are candlestick fans. And on top of that, we got right through the Bollinger Band here. And the last time it cleared back under the Bollinger Band, see here where it 
went under the Bollinger Band and then under the Bollinger Band in price, you know, you got a little bit of a move down. It wasn't a huge move, but it was a dollar for a $16 stock. That's not so bad. So this time it could even be a bigger fall if that happens. If it doesn't happen, though, then Ford, certainly against this high here, which would be looking right here at 1670, would be an area that you'd want to see hold up. Now, this is a smaller stock, but I like to follow sometimes these other stocks in technology and software. So, you know, you got something like AMD that reported and actually did well and now was definitely a sell the event type of situation. Um, but now you have something like Fiserv that just looks terrible. And so, again, now we're going to be looking at just either ignoring this stock completely, but for you mean perversion fans, you would want to see this clear the Bollinger Band here and clear the Bollinger Band here, which would be back over, let's say, 100. Now, the reason why I'm showing you this is to prove my point that you don't buy ahead of earnings because you can wind up either being in a situation like overstock, which as I'm talking to you is up over 23% after reported, or you can be in a situation like this, where it, which is down about 15% from since it reported and even more if you look at it from this high. So it's a crapshoot and you better know what you're doing. Next one, very much tied to the infrastructure package is American Tower. And we've talked about this one before. I mean, it says it's a specialty REIT, but it definitely will benefit from an infrastructure package if one should happen. But right now we're getting another interesting type of play here with the fact that this could not clear film price. Now, I would not call that a mean reversion because we certainly didn't have one in the real motion. But what we did see is that this could not clear the 50 when this did. So this is showing not only the just the, the report based on the fact that this actually beat in earnings, but not by enough, but we're also showing some skepticism on whether or not the Democrats can actually get this thing accomplished. Uh, next one, I'm really interested in, in Boeing. Boeing did actually reported fairly well, but you can see that Boeing has been hammered to death, but it also has, and actually Dave Keller pointed this out on Twitter today, it has a lot of historical support here at this 204 level. But look what's happening, mean reversion in price and potential mean reversion in momentum. So what does that mean? I'd wait one more day because we also have a new 60 plus day low to see if we can get a close, let's say on Friday over 207.63. I'm actually writing that down myself because if that happens, then you might have a really cheap way to play this stock that you know has been just rattled with one problem after another, but you would have a really good risk, I would probably say to under this low at 204.80, because if you look at yesterday's low, I think it was a little bit higher than that. Oh no, it was actually lower, 204.62 really is a new low. So then I would give it a little bit of fudge against that. And I like this. I like this one as probably a good mean reversion play. The reason why I like this fundamentally is, I think I explained this to you before, if not, in China, in terms of their commercial aircraft, actually buys a lot from Boeing. So it does have a fundamental reason as well. Okay, next one, I actually got a tip from somebody who is is in the who was a pilot and he said oh buy garmin because they have new technology that's coming out that's going to be really rocking the whole uh, aerodynamic space and that is that it's going to be an autopilot that literally a pilot has a heart attack or what have you presses the button and it does not only fly the plane it lands the plane it gets in touch with uh, tower control, et cetera, et cetera. And he was really excited about that from a fundamental standpoint. What this stock proves is fundamentals mean jack if you don't have technicals to go along with it. So what interests me about this is twofold. Number one is it still has a story. Number two is it's underneath the Bollinger Band, but sitting right on the 200 day moving average. And it's still underneath the Bollinger Band here in real motion. So you know what that means, right? That means if this can get a move on a new 60 plus day low back over the Bollinger Band or today's high, which is 147.59. See, this is another one. I, if I don't write these down as I talk to you, I forget them myself. 
one sub 47.59 and real motion confirm back over the Bollinger Band, then look at that. Another expensive stock that you get to risk to under 144.28. So keep this on your radar. Uh, next one is Teladoc. Now, Teladoc is a big Kathy Wood acquisition, and she bought it and bought it and bought it. And then it looked like crap this morning and then completely turned around. Look at that. Now, I wasn't really even watching this. I wish I had been. I saw it this morning come, that it was planned to come in lower. Don't know if this has anything to do with Kathy Wood. The earnings said that a lot of people that were using the service had not been using it, and so their profits went down. But nonetheless, obviously, the projections for going forward were excellent. More importantly, this is the kind of thing that you watch a stock like this when it's reporting, potentially if it's a hot stock, particularly if it's an ARC stop. And you probably had an opportunity to get long this over 138, worst case, even 140, risks 10 bucks, and now you would have had 10 bucks in the trade. What would I do now? Nothing. I would wait for this to actually have some level of dust settling consolidation within this humongous bar and then decide what to do from there. Okay, next one here is tech. Now, this I put up here because this is related to, to coal, which has been kind of hot. So this reported and obviously did okay. Slightly outperforming, doesn't quite have the momentum it needs, but nonetheless, right now, looking interesting here, if it holds this 2760 level, let's even call it 27, even though your 50-day moving average is here. But also notice you got a couple of highs up here with this high from the other day, 2885, today's high, 2894. So let's call it an even 29. If tech gets through 29, excuse me, then you might have an opportunity there. Now, I included Facebook in this because Facebook could have a really interesting, it's already having a price mean reversion, but it did not have a mean reversion in momentum because look at that momentum just went straight down. So instead of looking at this as a mean reversion trade, I would look at this now as if it gets back over the zero line and this can actually get back over the 200 day moving average instead of a mean reversion trade what do you have you have a new 60 plus day low potential reversal so it would have to not only clear tomorrow 31799 or 31699 or 317 but i would say at this point i'd wait for this to get back over 320 and then you can use today's low of 308 and change as some kind of risk i think the worst of that is over. Now, another one reporting today is Amazon. Now, Amazon is another interesting stock. I mean, you had this one thing here, but really, if you look at this chart over time, it's gone pretty much sideways, minus this little blip up right here, and it continues to go sideways. Now, this is a company that's looking to hire 150,000 seasonal employees to meet the demand for the holidays with supply chain issues and also with labor issues, whether or not they're able to meet that 150,000 workers remains to be seen. Nonetheless, Amazon has been upgraded. It has a 40 to 50% revenue growth from advertising. So again, it will have to surpass the expectations. If it does and it gets through 3,500, I would do this more as an active trade. But if it doesn't, then it might be also one to consider possibly from the short side if that's something you like to do. Another one reporting with very lofty coffee prices, even though coffee prices have come down today as I'm talking to you, is Starbucks. And Starbucks, everybody loves to love this stock. I actually think this could be a really good short. One, because coffee prices have gone up. Two, because they already said they have to raise their wages to get people to actually work in Starbucks. And three, you can see it's already breaking down under the 50-day moving average. If this thing breaks down under the 200-day moving average, you might have a short opportunity there. So that would be one to look at. Also, you could have a giant sort of head and shoulders sloppy one top, which means not only is it, could it be a sell under 111, but if it breaks down under 109, I think you could possibly see more follow through to the downside there. Now, MicroStrategy is tied to the cryptocurrency space, also reports, and they have already reported by the time you hear this. And this is sitting right on the 50 here, 
you got, you know, momentum actually not so great, but not so bad. So again, let's see what happens here. If this thing gets through these highs, obviously it's going to continue to go higher. However, if it does for some reason, and I doubt it because they have a lot of money in, tied up in Bitcoin that they paid way lower than where Bitcoin is trading, as I'm talking to you, it's over 61,000. But if for some reason it gets closer to 658, that might be an opportunity and a gift would be if it gets and breaks down the Bollinger Band and then comes back through it. So you could either be a momentum trader or you could wait patiently to see what kind of dip that it gets. All right, that, these are all ones that are reporting next week. I'm gonna start with a meme stock, AMC. So AMC right now is looking pretty weak. It looked like it was gonna get going. It never actually went anywhere. We have a lot of support at 30. We have an underperformance and we have a momentum indicator that is actually not doing too bad. It's kind of holding the Bollinger Band here. So looking at this, again, if this reports well and gets back through the 50 or well, or it sells off because the expectation uh, is worse than what they're, they're, they're putting out right now, and it gets down under 2730, that might be an opportunity to take a look at it if it flips back through and comes back that 200 day moving average, but not so great looking all things considered. I decided about Activision because Activision went way down with the China putting the brakes on how many hours kids could go and do gaming online, video gaming. But now it popped up a little bit there just based on short covering. It's sitting right on the 50-day moving average and right on the 50-day moving average here, momentum. So if this reports well, I would be a buyer of this, and I'm actually going to write this down too, over 81, and I would probably risk to give it a little bit of room. You can either risk today's low 76, 68, or you could risk to the 50 day moving average with a little fudge. So that's another one to keep an eye on. I mean, gaming may have gotten the kibosh in China, but certainly it's not something that's going away. Another one of my favorite stocks is Zebra. This is actually a small cap growth stock trading at $522, but it's a great stock. It's a growth stock for sure. And this might be a gift. HubSpot was another one I loved and that thing just rocketed to over 800. And this is actually giving us an opportunity to potentially buy it against the 200 day moving average or if it clears 550. So I keep my eye on Zebra as well. And a couple of left here, we have Match.com, which has had an explosive move this one day and then did nothing but sell off. This is where you never want to go into the fear of missing out trade because if you started buying it up here, you are well underwater. But nonetheless, this also reports next week. If this had some kind of a mean reversion trade, it's a little far from that. That would be interesting. Otherwise, I'd want to see what happens around the 150 level if it holds. And then if it can get back through 160, it could be more interesting. Baba is another one. I decided to actually give you a Chinese stock. This too, after all the bad news went way up. See that nice little reversal pattern here? And now it's coming back off again. It's actually still in line performance with SPY. Very interesting. Definitely not doing so great in momentum, but it's certainly no divergence. So again, if this thing does not do well, gets around 150, that would be compelling. Otherwise, if we can get through this Bollinger Band here, wherever it might be when it reports next week, that also could be interesting. It could mean the worst is over. Monster Beverage is another stock I always like to watch. Got beat up. So it's just here doing nothing, consolidating inside day, got to wait for earnings. But if this one now can hold on there and get up a little bit more in momentum, a little bit more in leadership and take out, say, this level here or even fill the gap up here to this low, which is uh, 87.67, that could be another interesting one as well. This has gone down a lot also because it was tied into the cannabis state space. And this is something I showed you guys when I did a whole thing on restaurants during the pandemic. That was a while ago. And so what's interesting here with Cake Cheesecake Factory is there's, a, there's sort of an anomaly here because American Express, part of the big reason why American Express did so well after it reported was because restaurant 
charges went up big time. Yet I looked at a couple of restaurants like this one, for example, and it's not really done well. So I'd keep an eye on this one because now you have really good support. You see these lows, if you go back here and here, you got really good support around that 40 level. And if this thing can get back up, let's say over the 50, 45, that could be a good opportunity. On the flip side, of course, if it breaks that 40 level, I wouldn't touch it. And the last one was one that I had a huge profit in. We haven't traded it since we've been out of it. We sold it actually up here is Scorpio tankers. And right now this broke down under the 50. You can see it's not looking great. It's sort of having a price mean reversion, but not in momentum. I keep my eye on this on how it reports, because this could give you another opportunity to get in at a much lower level. Of course, you can see we have big support here around 1350, then at 15. But really, I'd want to see this clear back over the 1750 level before I'd get in. OK, I hope that gives you lots of good ideas. I wrote down my favorites. Remember, it's Boeing, Garmin and Activision as probably my three favorite in terms of what's coming up and in terms of what actually already reported. Uh, intuitive Surgical, of course, keep your eye on Boyd, possible mean reversion in Visa, although it has a way to go. And a possible short potentially in Amazon or Apple or Starbucks, depending on how they come in. Okay, that's a wrap. Hope you guys got a lot of great trading ideas to look at. And I'll see you again next week. Have a wonderful weekend and bye for now. Hey guys, Dave Keller here with stockcharts.com. Thanks so much for watching our video. If you enjoyed it and we hope you did, hit the like button right below. Also, we have so much new content every day. Consider subscribing to the channel. Just hit the subscribe button in the video or right below. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Have a fantastic day.